back in February of 2024, Kernel.org, the Linux kernel project, became its own CNA, a CVE numbering authority, meaning the Linux kernel is responsible for publishing all of its own CVEs. Nobody else can publish a CVE against the Linux kernel. Now, third-party researchers can still find a security bug and then report it to the kernel, but the kernel does the publishing. There are a lot of reasons why this change happened, why the old system just wasn't really working, why kernel developers frankly just ignored CVEs because they just didn't make any sense for the way kernel development actually works. But I talked about all of this at the time. What I want to talk about is what has happened since then. This change has caused quite a bit of confusion for both developers and vendors alike. Now, you might rightfully think, oh, if the kernel's going to manage its own CVEs, there's going to be less published because if you publish less, it looks better. But that's not how the kernel worked. In the first four days, 200 CVEs were assigned, the majority of which have no demonstrated security impact. Now, that's not necessarily true. A lot of them were like, oh, it has a security impact, but it's this very specific configuration. It's a lab testing condition. It's not something like, you know, a heart bleed vulnerability, for example. And a few months on in June, people were still noting the fairly large number of CVs still being published, many of which were fairly minor, not really exploitable in real world conditions, but did exist in the code base. They weren't made up. They weren't like AI generated nonsense that was just hallucinating code. They were there. They just weren't really that big. And the kernel CVE documentation doesn't do much to quell these fears. In fact, a lot of people read what it says here and it makes the problem seem worse. Note, due to the layer at which the Linux kernel is in a system, almost any bug might be exploitable to compromise the security of the kernel, but the possibility of exploitation is often not evident when the bug is fixed. Because of this, the CVE assignment team is overly cautious and assigns CVE numbers to any bug fix that they identify this explains the seemingly large number of CVEs that are issued by the Linux kernel team. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean every single bug fix, but it is bug fixes that are relevant to the kernel security posture. The issue is if you can crash the kernel, that can be a denial of service attack. And in a sense, this is still a security issue. And this issue hasn't gone unheard by people high up in the kernel. Greg Crow Hartman spoke on exactly this problem about a week ago. Linux kernel CVEs, what has caused so many to suddenly show up? It is a 40 minute talk. It talks about a lot of things outside of the main topic I wanna to focus on here. It is a great talk. I highly recommend you go and watch it yourself, but I wanna summarize the parts that I feel are relevant to this topic here. The Linux kernel today has over 85,000 files and 38.6 million lines of code. And this is just what is in tree. It's not counting any out of tree drivers, which if you're on Android is a lot of drivers. It's not counting anything else in your operating system. It is just in tree in the Linux kernel. But most people are not running anywhere near that amount. You could if you wanted to, but it's a giant waste. Most people are using anywhere from 5 to 10% of that code because a lot of it is just drivers for hardware you don't use. It's drivers for other platform architectures. It's legacy hardware and a ton of other things that just don't really matter, whether that be for an Android system, a Linux desktop system, a web server, they're all going to be different slices, but it's all somewhere in that range of 5 to 10%. Now, keep that part in mind because it's going to be very important. Different people are using different parts of the kernel. Let's say, for example, I have an AMD GPU and you're using the outer tree NVIDIA drivers. If there is a bug that is causing a crash in the AMD GPU drivers, it's probably not going to affect those NVIDIA users. Also very important, the kernel does not do unstable releases. Yes, there are the RCs. Yes, there is Linus's tree. Yes, there is Linux Next, all this stuff. But these are just convenient ways for the developers to work with each other. When it is considered a release, 
it is considered a stable release, and it is something that should always be upgraded to. There is never a reason to stick back on an older kernel. Now, because of software you're running, there might be issues there, but there is a 17 plus year old agreement to not break user space. At least on purpose. Now, sometimes for the sake of security, you do have to break certain things. But outside of extreme cases like that, you should always be able to upgrade your kernel. Now, the world is a very different place to what it once was. I didn't realize the numbers were this high. But apparently 70% of servers are running Debian. And 80 plus percent of servers are using a non-commercial distro. This part you're probably going to expect. The biggest consumers of Linux are Android and modems. Red Hat and SUSE, whilst being big companies, are very, very tiny fish in a very big sea. And when we're dealing with security issues, you're not dealing company to company. If you have an issue in Debian, you don't get a community to sign an NDA. Now, the kernel security team is reactive, not proactive. So they react to security issues. They don't try to resolve them before they happen. Now, there are other groups that do operate proactively, trying to eliminate certain classes of bugs, which makes the job of the kernel security team considerably easier. A simple example of this is the introduction of Rust code. If you are not writing C in certain parts of the code base, certain kinds of memory issues just no longer are possible. And the way the kernel team writes C is very different to what they did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago when the kernel first started. And certain things that would have happened with that old way of writing C are just not possible now. Now, the kernel security team triages reports, they drag in responsible devs from the various subsystems involved, and then try to get the issue fixed as soon as possible. Now, you don't want to be added into the security list, because if you're added, it usually means that your subsystem has a lot of issues, and they just don't want to keep pinging you every single time they need to find you. And this is also very important. When a security issue is fixed, they do not do special announcements. Bug fixes are bug fixes. Bugs are bugs. And there's a fairly good reason for this. If some issues are marked as security issues, this is going to lead certain people to think, oh, if it's not marked as a security issue, it's obviously less important of a problem. By treating everything equally, you are responsible for reading the bug fixes. You are responsible for working out what is relevant to your particular use case. Now, the kernel security policy is very simple, and we talked a bit about this before. Due to the level of access to your system, almost every single bug has the possibility of being a security issue. Fixes for bugs happen ASAP and they're released ASAP. A fix for a known bug today is better than a potential of a fix causing a future problem. So yes, sometimes a bug fix is going to cause a regression. Yes, sometimes there'll need to be a bug fix for the bug fix, leading to a bug fix for the bug fix for the bug fix, leading to more and more bug fixes. But that hasn't happened yet. We don't know if that's going to happen. So if there's a fix today, use the fix today unless something is known to be wrong with it. The kernel does not know your use case or the code you use. And frankly, they don't want to know. They don't know and they don't care if a bug is a security issue for you. All they know is it has the potential to be one. Now, Greg also includes a quote from an article called What is a good Linux kernel bug? It's hard to capture the fact that a bug can be super serious in one deployment, someone important in another, or no big deal at all, and that the bug can be all of this at the same time. Vulnerability remediation is hard. Going back to what I said about AMD GPU drivers, if you have, I don't know, a remote code execution bug in the AMD GPU drivers, but it only happens when you're using a 
6700 XT. On a 6700 XT system, that's a really serious problem. If you're using anything else, it might not even be possible. And this is exactly the problem the kernel has. The kernel isn't a terminal. It's not even a web browser. It is something with 38.6 million lines of code. Nobody has any idea whether a problem is going to be relevant for you. And nobody has any idea how you're supposed to handle this. Now the kernel security team, the people who are actually fixing these issues, cannot and do not assign CVEs. This is the responsibility of the Linux CNA team. Now CVEs used to mean basically nothing in the kernel, and Greg held a talk about this back in 2019. CVEs are dead, long live the CVE. And a big part of the reason why they wanted to get rid of them, I didn't know about this, but it's kind of hilarious, is apparently they were abused by Red Hat engineers to circumvent their own Red Hat engineering processes because if something is marked as a CVE, it is a lot more important to get it merged into RHEL. And when a CVE is made, it's basically impossible to be revoked. So you have all of these CVEs that are completely meaningless to the upstream kernel, but they just exist and everybody just has to pretend to deal with them, find some way to deal with them, even though they were never relevant in the first place. Now, earlier this year, you may have heard of things like the EU Cyber Resilience Act and how it was going to change open source, how it was going to destroy open source, all this stuff. From the kernel's perspective, basically it makes the kernel now responsible for its own security issues, and this is what allowed them to actually become a CNA. Prior to this, they weren't actually able to do so. Now, that doesn't mean the act is entirely good, but that is the reason why they can even do so to begin with. Now, CVEs are assigned for every single vulnerability. And vulnerability makes a lot of sense for higher level software, but this is the definition. A vulnerability is an instance of one or more weaknesses in a product that can be exploited, causing a negative impact to confidentiality, integrity, or availability, a set of conditions or behaviors that allows the violation of an explicit or implicit security policies. And as a CNA, they are required to assign every single one of these. The problem is this is a very, very broad category. And when we're talking about things like availability at the level of the kernel, again, basically anything that causes a crash CVE. And there is a very common kind of crash due to a less than well thought out um, design pattern they have. So the kernel will do something known as a warn, where it posts something to the log if something bad happened. And this is fine. There is a kernel option called panic on warn. So this causes the kernel to reboot every time a warn is thrown. So people sometimes use warns in a fairly liberal way, and this can effectively cause a denial of service. And the problem that is happening might not actually be crash worthy. It's like, oh, we just have like a stack trace. Why is this a problem? But panic on warn is turning it into a problem. But not everything is a vulnerability. Data corruption, for example, which Greg himself is really confused about, not a vulnerability according to the CVE database, performance issues, and issues that cannot be triggered externally, none of these are vulnerabilities. Now, performance issues can be if it drops the performance to zero, but if it's like, oh, this attack happened and you're at 10% performance, 
the system is still technically running, so it's technically not a denial of service, so it's technically not a vulnerability. Now that the kernel is its own CNA, the way the CNA team assigns CVEs is through a vote system. And each of the people voting have their own different system. One guy apparently uses an LLM, someone else uses like a big test suite that looks for certain patterns, someone else has another system, and basically they all do different approaches. And if there is an agreement, this is a security issue, this is a vulnerability, it is assigned a CVE. But, again, they don't really know the conditions under which you are using the kernel. So even though it might not be an issue on their system, there might be configurations where it is a vulnerability. Alongside this, they also take community requests, and this is about one or two a week. So there is a lot of changes made to the kernel, and these are very low level changes, and a lot of these changes can crash the kernel, a lot of these changes can cause various vulnerability-like issues, and because you're at such a low level, basically anything that goes wrong could be a potential security issue, could be a potential vulnerability. Right now they're averaging 60 CVEs a week, indicating also the affected files, and the affected versions. Now, very few of these CVEs are actually going to be applicable to you due to which parts of the kernel are actually compiled on your system, which parts of the kernel are actually running on your system. Now, when a CVE is assigned, it's not assigned immediately as an issue is found, as a change is made. Usually there's like, a one or two week delay. This is to allow fixes to be resolved before an announcement, or it's not really an announcement, before any sort of public mention of the issue is done. This is to allow users and vendors to actually go and update their kernel and make sure the issues are resolved before they get exploited out in the public. Now, the question is, how do you sort through 60 CVEs a week? You need your own internal CVE team just to keep this going. And the answer is you don't. You don't sort through the CVEs. You just make sure you're running the latest kernel. And this comes with performance issues just being resolved for free. These issues are not new things that are happening. There being 60 CVEs a week isn't new. Yes, it is new that they're being called CVEs, but these issues have always been happening in the kernel. There has always been 60 security vulnerabilities every single week. The only difference now is they're actually being documented as a CVE, and it's something that you can very easily sort through, find out what versions are affected, what files are affected, and find out if you're affected altogether, or better yet, just run the latest kernel, and you don't have to think about it. Now, Greg ends his talk with a quote from himself. If you're not using the latest stable slash LTS kernel, your system is insecure. Which is completely true. These issues were always present, now they're just being documented, and I know companies have specific requirements about what they need to do with a CVE, but the best fix is to just make sure the thing you're providing is up to date, and then you won't have the problem. But what do you think? Do you think it makes sense to report all of these things as CVEs, or do you think CVEs should be saved for things that are more, like, a lot more security relevant? I would love to know. They're still security relevant, but... Not as much. Anyway, I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out our Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... You have a vulnerability. Yeah.